Well, welcome everyone. Um, I'm Caitlin Hines. I'm with Adventure Cat Wiz on Instagram. Um, I'm going to be the moderator for this session. Um, my oldest cat is three years old and my youngest one is, we think she's about a year old. Um, we live in Tempe, Arizona, and I've been adventuring with Wiz pretty much as soon as I got him as a baby. Um, so, uh, Holly, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself next. Hey, I'm Holly. I go by Travel Cat Mom online. Um, I just have one cat of my own. His name is Meister, and he just turned five last week through a little birthday party for him and everything. Um, and I've been... Um, going on walks with him since he was a baby. I started leash training him when he was like somewhere between 12 to 16 weeks. Um, so he's pretty used to that. He loves mostly like going on hikes and, and walks in the park, but we've done a lot of road trips too. Um, and yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Holly. Um, LA Beer Cats, you want to go next? Sure. Um, I'm Mark. And I'm Cambria. Um, and we have two cats, Burmy, who actually just turned eight yesterday. Um, not an April Fool's joke. And uh, then we have Kara, who's about 13. That's kind of our, our guesstimate. And um, they both were harness trained and leash trained as adults. We started training them three years ago. So exciting to see that senior cats can go through all of this training and be incredibly successful. Thank you, guys. Little technical difficulty. Thanks, everyone, for helping me out. Um, I'm Jess, and this is Moose, taking a little snooze over here. He's a four-year-old cat now, um, and we've been together for about a year and a half. We live in a log cabin in the woods, and uh, he was a former stray colony cat. So um, we're really excited to be here and share our tips about, you know, not a kitten, but not a senior cat either, but just training a cat who's had a very different um, experience with living outdoors. So thank you. And finally, Katie, Mr. McFluffy Pants, I know you're our uh, admin in the chat, but do you want to introduce yourself real quick? <laughs> She's introducing herself in the chat. Awesome. Thanks, Katie. All right. So I guess we'll just hop right into the first question. Um, Let's see, Jessica, since you're already on screen, maybe you want to start with this question. So with aging cats and, you know, they're very set in their ways. What's one thing that you did to help your cat adjust to their new adventure routine or any cat? <laughs> He's not the uh, the oldest cat, but mm -hmm. he did have um, a life that was really outdoors living in a stray colony. Um, so one of the important things I did to have him adjust to a new life is getting him used to the indoors and outdoors the way that I would like him to be interacting with indoors and outdoors. And the first part of that is, as Jackson said in the intro, getting them on a regular feeding schedule, um, which helped to regulate his sleep schedule, predict his behavior, you know, when he wants to nap, when he's ready to play. And I would use those routines to help him to train things like when I can let him out. Um, on a harness and leash only, um, going out one specific door and in another door, training him to sit and stay. So building a relationship with when the door opens and when he's allowed to go in and out. Um, and so there were, was a lot of training and a lot of patience and a lot of um, just building routine into this new life um, indoors and out. So that was kind of the biggest adjustment is, is training for routine. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, Mark and Cambria, do you guys want to add on to that? Yeah, I mean, um, I agree with everything Jessica said. Um, taking it super slow. I mean, um, no matter the age of your cat, I think every cat's going to have a different training experience. But any type of uh, positive and slow affirmations you can give them throughout the process. Um, we started with both of our kitties just having the uh, harnesses on, uh, sorry, out before we even put them on giving them treats, letting them sniff them. We, If you uh, have your feeder bowl in an accessible place to do this, even putting your harnesses uh, near where they feed, just so they have another kind of positive uh, context to it. Um, and just, just taking it as slow as possible and really gauging it off of the reaction and comfort that your cat shows. 
And the only other thing that I'll add to that, in addition to putting our harnesses near where they feed, is that we are very intentional about making their adventure backpack only a positive adventure experience. So we never incorporate taking them to the vet or anything in their travel cat gear. Yeah. We only um, do positive adventure experiences. So our cats actually, if we have the backpack out, they'll run and jump in it and like yell to be taken outside. So it's a very positive <laughs> for them they'll yell for hours after too <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome holly what about you how did you help your cats adjust their adventure routines um so those are all things that i also did um but i would say just like adjusting around a routine you already have in place would be really good so if, like for example like i feed my cat around the same time every day and so he knows when to expect dinner so when we go for walks i, I usually go before it gets dark and then be, like about an hour before dinner time. So like that was something we incorporated into our routine and you can continue to build your routine in the same way by like adding small things into an existing routine. That's awesome. So I guess going off of that, um, when you're, you know, getting your cat ready to adjust their routine, you're training them more, especially senior cats. Um, what are different training methods that you guys used for your cats either in preparation of adventure or even them already being seasoned travel cats. Holly, do you want to start? All right, can you say that one more time? Yeah, like what are some different training methods that you used with your cat to prep them to either go out or just, you know, continue um, that positive relationship with traveling? Um, my cat's really food motivated, so I use uh, freeze-dried treats and sometimes chewers. I have them right here, the freeze-dried treats by Bravo, and then chewers, he goes crazy for them. So that, that's something, if your cat's really food motivated, that's a great way to um, <clears throat> motivate them and, and reward them with something that they really love. So if your cat doesn't care for treats, you can use like play or affection as a reward or motivation during training, I think it's important to make it a fun and enjoyable experience for them. And I've also found clickers to be very helpful because it lets your cat know that they did something right and that a reward is coming, which is nice because sometimes your hand gets stuck in the treat bag and they're sitting there staring at you. And obviously mm -hmm. like you, just want them, <laughs> you want to reward them immediately before they forget what they did that, that they're being rewarded for in the first place. So like the sound of the clicker um, lets them know that they're about to be rewarded for what they just did. And like, I got this set of clickers from Travel Cat that are really cute and helpful. Yeah, I really like those clickers. Um, Jessica, do you do any specific training getting ready to go outside? Yeah, we do a ton of specific training, a lot of really specific skills. Um, just like Holly, my cat's very food motivated, and I use a clicker as well to train. Um, and some of the skills we learned are really important for not door dashing and letting your cat know, like, this is when it's appropriate to go out. So um, one of them is to sit and stay. So this cat tower here, we actually train specifically on this. It's right by the door, one of the doors of the house. And he sits, he stays, I go out the door and then I come back in the door and he gets a reward. So he's learned to, to not door dash that way. Um, another great tip for um, you know building into their routine is every time we do go out, um, I pick him up and go out the door or he's in his backpack and we go out the door. So he never walks out by himself. He knows if he goes out and he gets access to the outdoors, it's always by being picked up and then being put down. Um, when he comes inside, I always... The door is always open. He can always come in. I always want him to be able to like, he can come in. Same with the backpack. He can always jump in the backpack. Um, so that's one specific thing about, you know, a cat who's been accustomed to free range and just being able to do what he wants is, is specifically training him for when he can go out and how he can go out. And we do that with treats. And I have a second cat now. I've had her for about four or five weeks. She is not food motivated at all, but there are specific toys that she likes. Um, and so she gets supervised playtime with the catnip toy. And then when she's done something good and then the behavior's, you know, been praised, then we put the, the catnip toy away. And so that's starting to build in a different way when a cat's not food motivated. That's great. I love those different, you know, cats are so unique in their own ways. Not every cat loves food, just like Jackson said. I mean, they love food, but they're not food motivated. So finding that different 
technique to really get your cat's attention, um, I think is really important. Uh, yeah, Mark and Cambria, do you want to add anything else to this? Um, what, one thing that I found uh, was really helpful with our two cats was when we like got them used to the harnesses, we were having them move around um, at home for a while before we even introduced leashes. But once we did get them comfortable walking in the harnesses with leashes on, we would get them used to walking around the apartment with their leashes for a while, probably a couple of weeks or Both something. Both with us holding the leash, but also with the leash dragging behind them in case anything ever went wrong on an adventure, they wouldn't get freaked out by the leash being behind them. Another thing that, again, the backpack is the safe space for our cats. So also knowing like if they're out on their leash and the backpack's on the ground, just giving them the opportunity to go into their backpack. And Burmy, who's our eight-year-old, is a little more skittish of humans, but he is obsessed with the backpack and interacting with people from inside of his backpack. So for me, it was really great to see that our cat who, if other people are in his space, isn't super confident, has become an incredibly confident and social cat by giving him a backpack. He doesn't love being on the leash outside as much. Um, he definitely does it, but the backpack is where he shines versus our other cat shines on a leash and enjoys the backpack. So kind of knowing what works for your individual cat as well. Yeah, and I think um, if you're a little uh, hesitant about just jumping right into walking your cat on a leash outside, trying them in the backpack to see how they interact um, outside for the first time without the context of just jumping in a carrier and going to the vet is a good way to kind of gauge what their relationship to the world outside of your home is going to be. That's awesome. I have to say my cat is very similar to yours where super confident when there's not many people around or just people that he knows around. But like when we're on a hike, if we go around a corner and there's people standing there, he tries to go hide in the brush. So I just pick him on up, put him right back in the backpack and, um, and he's happy as can be with that. So um, Mark and Cambria, since you guys started training your cats at, I guess, a relatively older age can you mention how you saw their physiques change if you have seen any physique changes at all before adventuring versus after yeah i think i mean for for one thing um burmy was uh, clara came from just a very like bad environment before we adopted her so she was kind of the type of cat who was like it's only uphill from here so she had a <laughs> a very calm uh, demeanor to begin with. So mm -hmm. it was definitely easier to train her. Um, Burmy uh, was uh, just a lot more skittish, like we said, a lot more hesitant, shy around people. And since getting him to uh, become accustomed to getting a leash on, going on outside adventures, um, he has a much calmer personality. He's not as like tensed up and Heidi uh, mm -hmm. all the time. Um, so it gave a really, I think, positive change to his temperament as and well even inside of our house so um la beer cats we bring our cats to breweries because we work in the beer industry so they're very comfortable in like production spaces or around a lot of people but even Burmy, who again used to hide whenever we would bring friends over and he'd hide for like five hours now like greets people at the door like it's made a difference of him meeting people outside of the home inside of our home as well he's become more confident with other cats Kara has always been confident, but they've been able to meet cats and dogs and people and just become more confident in their home lives as well. That's awesome. Holly, uh, have you seen any like physique or even behavioral changes in Meister? And this could even be like maybe just for a few weeks, you weren't able to go on an adventure and then finally he's able to go out again. Um, he's not that old. He's only five. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen a whole lot of, you know, change, but uh, he has just as much energy now as he did when he was a baby. And mm -hmm. I feel like going on walks helps keep him in good shape um, and like a great way to release energy. But I mean, when he gets much older, I'm sure we'll be adventuring less, but it, like all depends on the cat. And uh, I would just say like, pay attention to their body and any changes and make regular visits with the vet so you can always know how they're doing and what's good for them and what's safe to do depending on their age and many other factors that your vet will tell you. Yeah, it really seems like the more active and um, socialized your cat is, the longer that they 
tend to live, which is really cool to see. Uh, Jessica, do you have anything else to add? Um, Moose was always a really like meaty, very physical cat. I think that was just because of his outdoor stray cat life. I think the biggest change I've seen is in our bond. It's just so much stronger going out with him indoors. Like he just, I, I think any of you who have cats um, know that when you start playing with them, and you get them into a routine and then start doing these adventures with them, it, it just, your bond is, is incredible. Um, one of the biggest changes I noticed from the beginning of our training together, um, going outside versus now, and we've been going out for walks over a year, is I used to have to really contain him. I would have to tug on his harness and leash, and that feedback to his body would tell him, like, I don't want you to go into that bush. I don't want you to climb that tree. I don't want you to run across the street. Um, he would really tug at it. So, you know, using um, the, what they call a vest style harness would be better because it was kind of spreading out how much pressure it was putting on his body. But over time, he's really gotten used to knowing that a tug on the leash and the harness means like, I don't want you to go there. This is the end of the line. This is your limit. And now a gentle tug is all it takes. And so he can use different style harnesses like the H style, like a thinner strap and things like that. So in terms of like his behavior outside, he's really learned over the course of time what his limits are and where he can go. And, and that's that's something that you just build over time with regular outside trips. Yeah, that's awesome. And one thing that I want to point out, I, I know Katie has told me this before, and I saw her mention it again in the chat that um, her cat has cystitis, which is a stress-based condition, and it has not flared up at all since they've been giving him outside time each day. So especially with aging cats, cats who have other conditions, I know it can be kind of scary to try and, you know, change up their routine, take them outside. You don't know how the different elements are going to affect them, but you know, maybe that exercise, that outdoors time, that fresh air really is what they need to help live a happier and healthy life. So um, thanks for sharing that, Katie. That was really great. Um, and then I guess finally, um, if everyone wants to just add in what their cat's favorite product is, like if they're a stroller guy, if they're a backpack guy, if they like the carriers, I would just like to see, and if, even if that's changed as they've gotten older, has, as time's gone, has gone on, um, Mark and Cambria, do you guys want to start? They are definitely, um, the backpack cats. We have two travel cat backpacks. And I think one thing that's also important to note is, um, one of our cats actually gets car sick. So she sits on our lap in uh, the travel cat and then pops out and looks at cars from mm -hmm. her travel cat backpack. Um, but they are definitely travel cat, but we did just get the new H style harness and tried it yesterday. And our cat is obsessed with it now. Um, so oh, that's awesome. it's definitely great to be able to see. They love their vest style. Honestly, everything travel cat's been a positive experience. So I definitely think that it gives your cats new opportunities for adventures. Yeah. And I will say, um, you know, again, you have to know and understand your cat's temperament, what they're going to be comfortable with. But um, for Cara, our, our older cat, um, because you have some different like customization options on the backpack, we actually, and again, you have to be, you know, very confident um, that your cat is not a dasher but we actually took our bubble out because she's more comfortable being able to uh, poke her head out of the center and up the top and just having that like accessibility made her even more uh, comfortable in the backpack. You might have someone that's a, you know, more of a dasher. And in that case, the bubble zipping up the top is going to be better. So, you know, they're able to look and not just jump out. Awesome. Jessica, I think we have two minutes left. What do you think? Um, I think it's really important to know the personality of your cat. And uh, so I take him out in the backpack sometimes, but really he's a four paws on the floor guy. He loves, mm. he loves to know he's owning his space. So he really likes just being on the walk on the harness and leash by himself. And I'm just going to add real quick that the car, um, if you could try moving and securing the backpack in some way in the center of the car, like maybe the middle back seat or the mid, like between the that might help with the car sickness. It's like the most stable part of the car. Mm -hmm. tip there. Good tip. Holly, what's Meister's favorite transportation? Um, that's actually a really good tip from Jess because uh, he hates yeah. the car. Um, but he he's really good on the harness. He's good in the backpack. He's good in the stroller. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I just feel like 
like all the training that we've done has really helped yeah. to, like bond and build a routine and um you know which is important for cats to have that's awesome yeah I see you um and him going on stroller walks all the time I think it's really cute <laughs> All right. And so I think that brings us to our time.